Hello darlings, welcome back to another video. We're going to be exploring 1950s table manners and etiquette. It can be a little bit confusing with all the cutlery laid out in front of you, but once you learn the rules, it's not that hard to follow. It wasn't only adults that were expected to know all of this, it was also children and teenagers because they would go to their friends' dinner parties, believe it or not. At these dinner parties, they would have all of the knives and forks and spoons laid out in front of them and they knew what they were all used for. So let's jump straight into it and learn about the table etiquette of the 1950s. Women never seated themselves. Men would pull out the chair, you would sit down and then they would push in your chair for you. I've got my salad in front of me here, which is my entree or first course. You wouldn't begin eating until everyone at the table was seated and the head of the table or the host began. All of the cutlery here can seem a little bit confusing, but from all the educational videos from the 1950s I watched, they say you work from the outside in. So for example, if I didn't have this salad here and I had a soup instead, I don't have any soup in here, but let's just pretend. And oh my gosh, I'm so silly. I didn't put my napkin on my lap. Now, before we begin, we would be using our lovely fabric napkin and putting it onto our lap. We would be having our soup, dipping it in and scooping away and then sipping it from the side. We're not going to be blowing on our soup or anything. It's just a little bit of soup and you're just scooping away and sipping it from the side of the spoon. And we're not going to be putting the spoon in our mouth like that because that's not ladylike. And then once you're finished with that, you would put your spoon on the side of your plate and then the waiter or whoever would take that away. And if not, it would be the head of the table, the host. Now with our salad here, this is what is going to be my entree. I'm not having any soup. So we've got our cutlery here. We've got our knife and fork and we are going to be eating the salad with our knife and fork and cutting it up. delicious tomatoes. I grew these and I can say, good job. <laughs> now, when you're eating, you are never to leave your knife and fork hanging off your plate like this. If you are not finished, you can just leave your knife and fork on the side of your plate. You don't leave it hanging off like this. And of course, you don't eat with your mouth open and you don't talk with food in your mouth. This is a bad time to be filming this video. I'm so starving. I just could shovel this down, but 1950s table etiquette. I'm just gonna put this to the side and I'll finish this later because I'm gonna move on to my main course. Food in the 1950s was often put in the middle of the table and it was something that you passed around and it was like a, a casserole or beans and sides that you would put onto your plate and serve yourself if you didn't have a maid or anything. The food is passed from left to right. So let's pretend this is my little serving bowl. I would serve myself and then pass it to the right and then they can serve themselves. I've got my main meal of potatoes here and I've got my bread and butter on the side. Now that's always on the left and your drink is on the right. If everyone is in the process of being served and you don't have everything on your plate yet or you're waiting for everyone to be served, you don't start eating until everyone has their meal in front of them. So you could Pull apart your bread while you're waiting for everyone because you can't start this yet. And you would then take a bit of butter and butter it on the side of your plate here, like that. And then you can eat this while you're waiting for everyone to serve themselves. And you have to wait until you've finished eating and you don't have any food in your mouth before you take a drink. Believe it or not, I don't think I've ever had bread and butter by itself. It might have been toast and butter, but never bread and butter. And then if you need to dab your lips. Once everyone has their food, you can then start your main course and you're using the outside cutlery again. So I've got a knife and fork here and just cutting everything and holding the knife and fork. I feel like this is so normal to me. I grew up like this. We would have our knife in our right hand and our fork in our left. If you would like more food on your plate, you just rest your knife and fork to the side 
and then go for a second helping so that there's plenty of space on your plate to put food on without your cutlery being in the way. And once you've finished a meal completely, let's just pretend I've eaten my meal. Once you've finished the meal, you then put your knife and fork in the middle of your plate to a right angle and with the fork prongs up. After you've finished your meal, if you're feeling like you need to touch up your makeup and your lipstick, you definitely do not do that at the table. It's rude. You should get up and go to the powder room and make yourself over before coming back to the table. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in America, do you usually cut your food and then eat with your right hand? In my everyday life, I sometimes do that if the food is predominantly fork food, but for the most part, if I'm having a baked dinner and something that everything needs to be cut, I always have my knife and fork in my right and left hand. So once you've finished your main meal and that is then taken away, you will then have your third course. I can't remember whether I've put the fork on the wrong side, but obviously we're eating with our right hand. So <laughs> I've got some fruit here. I've got some strawberries from the garden and some pear. Depending on what sort of dessert you're given, you might just have a fork or you might have a fork and a spoon. In one of the 1950s educational videos I watched, she had a stewed stone fruit in front of her. And so she spiked it with her fork in her left hand and then she scooped away the fruit with her spoon in her right. But because I just have fruit in front of me and I don't really need to break it up, I'm just gonna be using my right hand and a fork. Delicious strawberries. Mm -mm. Another little fun fact, which I learned from another video I did, which was dating in the 1950s. When you went out to dinner with a man, he was the one that would order for you. You would tell him what you wanted and then he would order. Even if you were at a table with a group of other people, the women definitely did not order. That was always the man's job. It's always very interesting to see how things have changed over the years, for better or for worse. I think some of these table etiquette and manners we should still be using today. I think it is really nice to know all of this etiquette for the occasion when we might go out to dinner and have three courses and all the cutlery in front of us and we will know exactly what to do. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new and I'll see you all very soon. Bye. And oh my gosh, oh my gosh, let me go again. I'm so silly, I didn't put my napkin on my lap, putting some butter on my plate, but this is something in my eat with your mouth full. <laughs> and you would then, what is it? I don't know whether my hands are shaking. Now, I think I put my, did I put, put my fork on? Obviously we're eating with our right hand, so. <laughs> oh my goodness.